Hey yo, welcome back to Tactics Talk with Guido. Appreciate you guys tuning in, supporting the channel. On this episode, we have Bonzi Duck is in his T26 E5. It's a tier eight American heavy premium tank. He's in a good setup on proc with a 357 top tier. Couple artillery on each side, big open map. You can see the initial deployment. I like the idea. This is where I would have taken the T26 E5. The other option was the 5-6 line. You needed more down on the 5-6 line. We'll talk about that as it goes. And the enemy has an MT-25. So initial positioning wise, not a bad decision right here. Bonzi's going to see some guys showing up in the 5-7. He's going to come over here and start taking a look. I don't particularly care for hanging out on the back side of this. But what you're going to actually see here is the enemy team is going to come up and over fairly aggressively. I probably would have pushed up and over. How that exactly went for me is another question because pretty soon you're going to see quite a few of the enemy tanks pushing up there. Bonzi takes a couple shots there. And you can see a heavy has come up over the top. He's still sort of looking at that pilot. And pretty soon he's going to notice that something's going on to his right side. Like I said, he does not have nearly enough people in the 5.6. It's just a little DA sitting down there. I think the T-21 is buggered off. Yeah, he went over to the west side. But the enemy team, even though they're stacked up on their 5.6 and supporting as they should be, it looks like they have neglected the 1-2 line pretty hard. And all of a sudden, we've got a 112 right here. So Bonzi's going to start fighting this guy. This T-26 got decent depression, not amazing. Come up, unfortunately, just kind of bad gunnery there. Shoots at his track and ends up hitting it. The 01 is taking a shot. He's going to shift a little bit right, but I think, Bonzi, you needed to come a little bit further right. It's a little flatter right where that road is, and you're going to have a little bit better time. So these are those micro-positioning decisions that you need to make. I I would be zooming in on those Bonzi as opposed to just accepting an auto-aim or a third-person shot like that. There you go. There's a bounce. You end up bouncing there. The O1 is kind of sitting on the spot you would like to be on. And you're, you're sort of accepting this third person kind of shooting. I would be do for my money, you need to be in here zooming in on these guys. All right. So that when you come up and over, you're finding which guy is the most exposed, the guy you can get the first shot on. It would be nice to take the 112 out. So consider that while you're popping up and taking your shots. But at the same time, there's a lot of enemies there and you got a lot of work to do. So the minimum exposure to you and the first one of those four you can hit would really be right now my priority. You've got plenty of friends for the moment. They're shooting, there you go, so we're going to get this 112 and holy cow, unlucky, goes into his track. He gets stuck and unfortunately you don't have a lot of synergy here because you don't have enough guys on the 5-6 line to tear these dudes up. If only a couple people had been down there they'd actually be eaten alive. Come up there you get hammered by the IS-2, the ISM bounces. Unfortunately, the IS-2 not only hits you, but he gets to shoot you and not be spotted. Nice job right here getting up underneath his track, but no penetration. And you're down to about a two shot. I see a shift around right here. And then you think better of it because that's just a little bit more angle than you really want there. Coming up and over, watch the O-1. You got to commit and take a shot or, or back off, I think, in this situation. And from here, it's just zooming in. I think you probably had a shot, and that's not bad. You see that he's got the side, but you didn't really need to come that high. You only needed to come high enough to get into the side of his turret, not to try to get to his lower plate. And also, just as an example of what I was talking about earlier, had that ISM been lower, you actually had the O1 highlighted way before. And the problem with this, what you're doing, is you're exposing yourself to a lot more tanks down there than you really need to be. And I would start considering that O1, just peeking up enough and start picking at that O1 back there. Now he's gone, so you don't have a lot of options there. ISM bounces, you're gonna come in and look for a shot. Nice, Nicely done, the O1 was actually being blocked by his own ISM, so that was a good decision to come up there. You're in a little bit flatter spot there, so this is a better posit overall to be fighting these guys from. And my discussion there of who to go after applies once again. Look how much you're exposing yourself to him. You didn't even need to come up this high. Just ignore the ISM. He really can't hurt you right there. Start picking away at his buddies back here. And an IS-2 has a really bad turret. So just blap him in the turret. Even in the upper, upper plate for an IS-2 with gold, you're fine. But look how much more you expose yourself. In fact, you're exposing yourself more and more even to this derpy IS-2 back here. 
going to end up getting a shot on you potentially. So don't get too enamored of taking down one guy. Many times you just want to take the best shot you can get with the min exposure. And that's what you're doing there. That was the right idea. IS-2 got your gun. You bounce the ISM. Why? Because you didn't come way up and over. You only gave him your, his, your turret. Gave him your turret. There you go. Oh, that hurts. And now you're in big trouble, right? Because you're definitely a one-shot. In fact, any of them with just some HE. And here comes the IS-2. Bam. Hummel takes you down. And you're not able to survive that anyway. So his question, Bonzi's question was, did I do the right thing? Uh, what he meant was holding here as long as he could. And I would say, yeah, I think you misprioritized a few times on who to shoot. You overexposed a couple times. You worked kind of a bad angle over on your left side for a little too long. So I'd estimate you left three shots on the table maybe uh, based on coming up and shooting the first guy you had an opportunity to shoot at and potentially saving yourself a couple of those hits as you came up and over. As it is, they end up winning this battle. He has a workman like 1,500, 752 spotting. But you can see his enemy team, or the his enemy team, his friendly forces are folding around and starting to flank these guys. And like I said, they end up winning this game. Nice job overall, man. Just I think a little things on the micro positioning front. Now you get in a hold down position like that with a T26 E5, you, you gotta, if you play that thing solid, you can really dish out the pain and do a lot of bouncing. As it was, you did a decent job with it. All right, guys, I hope you like what you saw. I hope you learned something along the way. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and we will see you.